I feel so connected to your story. Mm -hmm. I feel like the component that you're sharing about like being unworthy, like I'm not equipped enough, right? Like how could I do such a thing? I don't know the gospel. I don't know the word. I'm not even able to speak Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. And I have this huge pull to bring the gospel and speak on stages in a fluidity that I don't yet have <laughs> in Mexico to be able to help women like erect businesses and actually be able to say yes and provide for their family and the amazing gifts and talents that they so naturally have, um, but don't really know how to lean into it. And so I'm just, I'm really in awe. I'm in awe of the moment. I'm in awe of your ability to say yes, even against that unknowingness, right? And I think that's just such a necessity that people don't lean into is like, they let those circling patterns of I'm not worthy. I'm, I don't know how that'd be possible. I can't. And they just stop right there versus you just continue to pursue and immerse yourself in the culture and the process, which I think is very critical. Well, I think that one of the things is you're talking, because I, you know, I think it was uh, as painful as it was that it happened on my grandmother's deathbed. I feel like it was, you know, you're called fit to faith. It was the beginning of being trained by the Holy Spirit because it brought me, I was so humbled. I was in such a humbled, broken, open space that it was so clear and obvious. And that moment has never left me. That moment of, of being connected with the pulse of, you know, in the healing world, some people call it the great mystery, but it's God, it's the Holy Spirit. And once I had that connection, I rarely make a move without it. You know, it's trained me like a muscle to be tuned to that frequency, you know, and and frankly, and I, you probably feel the same way. I, I wouldn't want to because it is amazing. My very first manager that came a few months after that, she was an amazing Christian woman, Kathy Douglas. And she said, watch where God is working and go there. You know, and so it was like helped me to focus my lens and be able to hold the space of miracles. Wow. Because we can, we can, right? I think through like you're having what some would believe is like the, a duality in conversation here, right? And so I just want to speak to the elephant in the room <laughs> and the elephant in the room, not an elephant to me. Like I've addressed the elephant. I love the elephant. We're friends, <laughs> but this idea of like frequency and energy and healing and um, the afterlife and conversating with the afterlife. And a lot of the things that you're saying where I will say, quote unquote, the church um, or religious natured people would not be willing to explore this type of conversation. Even the Holy Spirit seems to be extracted out of the Bible, you know, and even though it's clear as day that there is a Trinity. And so I'd love to hear, like, how did you navigate Christianity and being exposed to ideas like frequency and energy, even though they're God's ideas where the world kind of tries to manipulate them as more woo woo or not connected to who he is, even though you believe that deep knowing of it's truly from him. I think that it's because of my direct experience. It's the direct experience with, with God. It's, it's the direct experience of a little girl growing up in a small town and being raised in the church and believing at some level that Jesus does love me and that being where I go, there is, you know, in, in my mind, in, in my mind, in my imagination and in my heart, that's where I go for consultation, to be held, to be loved. And certainly I think it's no coincidence that through um, being Hispanic, you know, that many of uh, Christians in Mexico are still connected to these indigenous ways of connecting to God. And so, you know, I was raised with that. They come together. There's nothing alternative about it. And in fact, it's incredibly fulfilling because whatever 
God is to me, I have an experience. I feel that love. I feel held. And I feel like that's what I hold for other people. And I feel like those are the songs and the music of my heart, you know? So my prayer is that um, I can open people up to whatever that pathway is, that they don't, you know, dismiss or shut down my uh, message or my love, my transmission of, of Christianity, because I am. I consider myself a, a Christian woman and I honor um, the ways that, however you want to say, the spirit moves through people. Yes, it's so beautiful. You have such an eloquent way of describing your you know, encounters. And I think if we were more open to share, people wouldn't be able to use other language other than what it is that you're saying, because it is, it's a sensation. It is a frequency. It is a sound. It, it does emanate as if it's energy. And yet that feels very like juxtaposing to what you would hear a traditional person saying when I met Jesus, period. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every time I'm ever in his presence, even when people get, you know, goosebumps, right? <laughs> like there's nothing normal about that. Like, yes, your body is responding, but it's like you're present. You're, you're in that moment being engulfed by an energetic experience that is nothing other than God, in my opinion. It's not cold air. It's been the same temperature the whole time, right? <laughs> and so explaining that to people, I think that's when the boldness or the curiosity even is uh, envelopes even more beautiful because you can't take away somebody else's individual encounter. When they're describing it, it's like you're being invited into this intimate space. And every time I've had an interaction with the Holy Spirit, it's really intimate and really incredible. And so I just love like your freedom and how you share and the fact that you bring that into your music and even the first title of the song, right, that you created. I'd love to know being in like popular genre of music country being a part of that mm -hmm. knowing that it's not all christian premised right mm -hmm. how did you navigate exploring the industry when there were probably a lot of open door opportunities not all of which like your mentor said that god was actually in was it hard to say no was it um a uh, an acute awareness of his presence or lack thereof or was it like a, a clear discernment well, it's been a 20 year journey, 20 years, nine albums, uh, had a song that was number one on The Voice. Um, and every one of them, miraculous, you can point to it and you go, that's where God was working. That was meant to be. Um, you know, I have feel I feel like I've been guarded by and surrounded at every turn, you know, like I said, my first manager was a, was a, I mean, a prayer warrior, a Christian prayer warrior. She was the first person that guided me. Um, my first investors in, in Texas, Randy and Anita Moore, again, prayer warriors, um, praying over me into every concert. And so I, I feel like I've been led. I wouldn't say if there was it, if there was darkness that I was encountering along the way, it was from old stories within myself, you know, and my worthiness, you know, that came from those initial stories of, well, you're Mexican and there's something wrong with you, you know, that in a little child's mind grew up really big to us to to. And so that is what I had to continue to turn over you know, to be made into something um, beautiful. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, of course, you know, there's uh, in the music industry, there's, you know, I can't tell you, I know many giant stars. I've watched their ascent and, um, and um, that has not been my path to a certain level yet. Um, but, 
And that has been hard for me to navigate again along the way. Like, why not me? Why not now? Um, but I absolutely believe that things have been being grown in me for a certain season in life, which I believe that I'm living right now.